Okay, so welcome everybody, everyone, to um, to Pilot Strategy first webinar. Uh, my name is Romain Viguier. I'm a project manager at Scottish Carbon Capture and Storage based at the University of Edinburgh. I lead the work on public communication and impact management for the project Pilot Strategy, and I will be chairing the webinar today. Uh, so the next slide, please. And, um, but first, a few words about the project itself. Uh, pilot strategy is investigating geological CO2 storage site in the industrial region of Southern and uh, Eastern Europe to support the development of large-scale uh, carbon capture and storage, CCS. We are focusing our research on deep saline aquifer, which are porous rock formation, filled with brine, several kilometers below ground, and the deep saline aquifer promised a large capacity for storing CO2 capture from, from clusters of industries. So we are looking at them particularly. Next slide. Some uh, detailed studies will be carried on on deep saline aquifer in the Paris basin in France, in the Lusitanian basin in Portugal, and the Ebro Basin in uh, Spain. Uh, the project will also uh, enhance our knowledge of CO2 storage options in West Macedonia, in Greece, and Upper Silesia in Poland. So following uh, best practice in public engagement, the project pilot strategy also engaged with citizens and stakeholders to ensure that community perspectives are fully represented in the project. And that's the, that's the object of this first webinar. And the next uh, slide, please. This is to acknowledge our uh, funders. So Pilot Strategy uh, is funded by the European Union Horizon 2020 program and involves 16 research partners from seven European countries. And so now uh, the next slide is about the program of the webinar today. So, um, following the welcome I have just gave you about the project and webinar introduction by myself, we will have an overview of social acceptance in pilot strategy from Elisabeth Dutz from Fraunhofer, followed by a case study of Portugal by Anna Delicado from the University of Lisbon, and then regional stakeholder committee presentation from Sabine Rose from Fraunhofer. And this will be followed by a Q&A session uh, to which a group of panelists will join the presenter. Okay. And so now I would like to introduce our first speaker, Elisabeth Dusk from Farnover. Over to you, Elisabeth. Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction and, and welcome. Good afternoon to, to everyone listening in. So we are happy to share our, um, yeah, Finding first findings or, and also the, the plans or approach that we have taken in this pilot strategy project on um, yeah to on, on participation and engagement. Um, next slide, please. As you maybe first adding to these general explanations that Romain just gave you, pilot strategy is a project that builds on another project um, called Strategy CCS. And um, we we were also already part of the or of the team that that worked on the strategy CCS, which um, was implemented 2019 to to 2022. And in, in this project, we similar to the one running now, we took this regional approach. So in this first phase, we um, worked um, with. Um, eight regions and to develop strategic plans and on a CCOS. So to, to look into whether this could make sense given decarbonization needs, given geological conditions, etc., uh, as a strategy 
for these regions to in in the fight against climate change. And now pilot strategy is building on that project. We reduce the number of regions because now it's much more intensive. And the idea is, especially in our three focus regions in Portugal, Spain, and France, um, to develop to develop this further towards that really a pilot um, storage could be developed or the decision could be taken not to develop it so that we are re really doing broad inquiries to prepare these regions for a decision combining different um, perspectives, um, the geological perspective, but also, and that's a topic of today, the societal perspective. And um, I'll go to more details about our approach towards society, but just to, to have that in the back of your mind that we also started the societal activities already earlier in the strategy CCS projects. So in some of these regions, we are now already working in for around um, four years and are going to continue that for another um, three years because the pilot strategy project is um, yeah, it has a duration of five years overall, and we are now like in the in the second year, so yeah, heading towards uh, the midterm. Next slide. Can I have the next slide, please? Or can I change the slide? Yes, thank you. Now, what uh, what are the aims of um, yeah of this? engagement and participation work um it is of course to, to it's a combination of um yeah implementing engagement part, uh, activities but also combines this the research approach so it also includes analytical um elements so with the idea um to in the end also give recommendations so more specifically we aim at understanding the public attitudes and concerns and needs if um, a discussion around geological storage of CO2 takes place then also um, in some of the regions um, like the, the broader region was defined from the beginning but in, in the course of pilot strategy we are narrowing down um, the, the potential storage sites and in in two of the countries in Portugal and Spain there was a decision to be taken between two potential areas in both cases this was a yeah there was an offshore and an onshore site under discussion and then of course we we look into uh, local acceptance and perception, but there's, uh, but these are embedded in in the wider societal context. So we are also taking this into account, and then kind of, yeah, really one of the core is this local participation engagement um, uh, activities. Next slide, please. Yeah, how do we do this? How do we conceptualize this combination of analysis and and participation? We, we go th through two main phases in the pilot strategy project and the first one was an exploratory one and that's kind of the point we have completed this exploratory phase and that's at the, at the folk or I think it's more like some spotlights from from this phase or in 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 the focus of today's webinar and we have now started and in, into the engagement phase and during the exploratory phase we uh, there were two main elements so we looked into the, the policy framework and we looked into the regions more details about that will follow and now in the engagement phase um uh, yes of course it's about engagement but this is kind of on one hand headed towards the, the public towards citizens and on the other hand towards stakeholders and representatives from the, the the regions and to kind of yeah frame this or embed this also in the wider project with close links to other work packages who are more focused on in technical geological issues or on uh, risk analysis etc we have established within the consortium a trans and interdisciplinary dialogue where we talk about or we yeah very really engage on also on the people working on the project on their perspectives on the project on the technology on our expectations experiences also to make yeah to to come to a way to find a, a common language and also to reflect on what's happening and on the other hand um 
on, on also on this on analytical stance, we do what we call monitoring of public acceptance. Um, so this is basically that we in, included a survey at the at the beginning as part of the exploration, and we do so at the end to to try and kind of see what's happened in the regions. Um, yeah. Next slide. Yes, thank you. Um, so one of the elements of this exploration phase was to look into the, the policy alignment as, as an innovation such as CCUS is of course dependent on, on, on the wider framework. So it needs um yeah, it needs um legislation and regulation that, that um enables its um, implementation and also sets the framework not only on technical issues but of course also on yeah on societal and participation issues i don't really i don't want to go to details with that so my main idea is to mention to you today that 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 we did this and that this is there and what's one of the main findings from that is that um our countries um are somewhat prepared for um implementing and discussing um ccs but they it's they are kind of yeah within europe on a on a yeah, on a medium level in comparison so we have frontrunner countries like the uk or the netherlands who are more advanced implementing ccs into policy strategies and to providing legal frameworks etc there are of course other countries um with less activity one example is germany but it, but there are two also two publications on that summarizing the findings which you yeah could, can find on our um, web page or you can ask a question later on now really getting into the region next slide please um here we combined um three elements so first we or yeah they, there's not really a first and second there's a first left on the slide but we did this in 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 parallel so also in informing um each other about that but one thing is there was a media analysis um implemented in in the main countries in portugal spain and france and then that we did an exploration through collecting documents and interviews and then there was the first round of the survey and and i'm I'm saying we. This is re this is to really we as the consortium because we are working on this engagement and participation um, strategy as a team with involving more or less all partners from the consortium. Of course, but that yeah a variety in in workload. So they're in especially in Spain and Portugal. There are um and france and there are additional partners we have a, a strong background in in science communication engagement and participation activities but also the, the technical partners or the people of the geological expertise etc are closely linked to this work package and bringing in um information their knowledge about the region their contacts and networks of course because they from also from from implementing their work they they get into interaction with them um, the citizens with stakeholders with experts so that we can really build on that and that's also important for all of these steps that we have this close connection now what did we find next slide please um, regarding the media analysis of course there were some differences between the three countries we looked into online media in the terms of that we checked wikipedia entries on ccs as well as um, what you find if you google ccs in these countries and we took the classic approach of looking into into newspapers and overall we find that ccs is it's not a, a top line topic but with quite some differences with lower um coverage for example in portugal consistently in newspapers and online and more um discussion in in france with spain uh, being in in between that and um we, what we also saw especially in in france is um that media coverage on on ccs as a topic is in increasing and um but there, there's also a difference in in kind of 
the way of discussion between online and newspapers. Um, next slide. Um, in this step of collecting documents um, and interviews um, on, on the regions, from the regions, um, we found, and this was done now in, in all countries, also in Poland and Greece, we found really a broad variety of um, perceptions uh, on the favorable to unfavorable um, dimension, but also in terms of of prior knowledge or interest in the topic or awareness about the discussion, so really high informed people and pe yeah, and then but on then also on the other hand, more on the regional level, people who who needed to be informed um, about CCS as a first step before really discussing the topic in the interview. Um, what is more. Uh, where many people, not all um, people agree, but many is that CCS could play a role to decarbonize industry. So that's kind of seen as one of the, the main opportunities. And then, but then in relation to hoping for, for local economic benefits and employment, but there was there are also discussions about in how far um, CCS could um, be in conflict with other decarbonization pathways. Um, and then finally on the survey, next slide, please. Um, again, this is just kind of a glimpse, but what we did is that we we more specifically defined what's the affected region for for this project, and um, then we recruited um, around 300 to 500 um, citizens in, in this area, trying to be representative in terms of um, gender, etc., and to kind of to find out about the, the levels of knowledge, but also about the kind of yeah spontaneous opinions about the idea of discussing CCS in this area. And I think what's important to note here is that even if we, we provided information um, about CCS, of course, in the survey, but still um, up to 10, 14, 13% in some of the countries were not really willing to give an opinion because the topic was very really new to many people. That's what you see in the pink circle at the bottom. And then the other thing what we see is that, so the green in, in the uh, in the columns indicates a yeah po positive opinion or support, while the red is the more skeptical part, is that this really, really varies between the region, so we have, and the country, so we have, um, yeah, a, a large variety there with um, people from in in Spain who were um, maybe had this offshore and onshore area, were rather skeptical in both cases, but even more skeptical regarding the offshore area, and um, then while people in France and and also in in Poland were more. Um, supportive in, in this um, survey. Next slide. Can, can I have the next slide, please? Yeah, thank you. So summing this up um, uh, is, yeah, we had, I had, I gave you a very short uh, glimpse at these, um, these different elements and, and the findings, of course, there's much more to it. I think you'll be real, that that will become more visible in the next presentation, which focuses on on Portugal. That this, yeah, that this what I could say here in in 15 minutes was just like, um, yeah, a very superficial overview. But um, what we learn is that. Um, Societal perceptions and variations of CCS are just evolving, meaning that with these low levels of awareness, limited extent of knowledge, also um, opinions are very likely um, yeah, flexible and volatile. So the, the coming discussions are very important to um, uh, yeah, to, to come to more final opinions. Um, but what we also saw is that there was an interest to, to discuss the issue, so that in, in terms of that climate change as a topic and also um, preserving industries in Europe is something that is on people's agendas and so that and it, whether or not um, CCS or even the CCS could play a role in that is a topic for discussion. 
Um, as I said before, in this regional approach, yeah, we had really, there's a lot of more, more specific findings, like an example we have followed with the Portuguese case, and we are now taking this up in the engagement phase, as Sabina will talk about later. And but was additional learning, maybe more on in the overall level, is that we really benefited from this broad interdisciplinary team, and that you you really need all of these competence with like a social science communication background, but also of course the technical aspects, etc. So, yeah, to to bring this uh, really together, and then also that yeah resources are dedicated to these activities like in in this project where this is a yeah a full work package so um to uh, for the co to coordinate activities but also to bring together all of these facets so i look forward to the later discussion and now hand over to the second presentation Thank you, Elizabeth. I think uh, it was a, an excellent uh, introduction to the work we've conducted in the past two years. And now I'm going to speak a little bit about our results that we achieved in Portugal. I cannot fail to mention that uh, this is not a, an individual work, but rather a teamwork. And we had uh, both Jussara Roland and myself a lot of collaboration from Julio Carneiro and they were present in most of the work and they revised most of the work we did so it has been a, a, an excellent case of interdisciplinary collaboration um next slide please oh, thank you uh, so, uh, Portugal is a relatively small country and it does not have a very profound uh, regional organization, but still, uh, we managed to isolate uh, a region where CCS, the pilot CCS, would, probably would take place. The selection of this region was um, already done in the previous project strategy. CCUS, and so it was uh, the team from the University of Évora had already identified that the most promising locations for storing CCS underground were in the west coast of Portugal. There are other saline aquifers uh, in other parts of the country, but this region had both optimal uh, geological conditions, but also proximity to the relevant industries. So the, the, the process of choosing the region was fairly straightforward. However, just like in the case of Spain, there are two main possibilities of doing the pilot and the storage onshore and offshore. Luckily for us, which didn't happen in Spain, the region was the same onshore and offshore, which is about eight municipalities in the west coast of Portugal. This is a densely populated area because the majority of the population in Portugal lives in the coast, so this is not a depopulated area like in Spain. Uh, we have uh, multiple economic activities uh, in this, uh, this eight municipalities. Some are more specialized on agriculture, others on fishing, others on industry, but all across there, the tourism sector plays a very relevant role and that is something that we believe that may cause, cause some constraints to the developing a CCS project here. Also, this is an area that is rich in natural heritage. It has several protected areas. Uh, it has natural parks. It has a, a very uh, well-known system of caves. Uh, pine for uh, protected pine forests, so there's a lot of um, environmental and natural considerations uh, to, to be had here. There's also uh, a wealth of cultural heritage. We have historical monasteries, castles, locations of battles. So this also has a lot of uh, impact over the, the, the local identity. 
Also, the relationships with the sea in this part of the country are also very strong. These are areas known for their fishing, their traditional fishing practices, but also for their beaches, for surf. It has the biggest wave in the world. Also, based on the document analysis we performed, we realized that this region has a very long-standing history of environmental protest. For instance, more recently, and even involving partners of this project, there was a movement against oil and gas prospection in this area. Next slide, please. In trying to assess just how acceptable CCS was for this region, we started, as Elizabeth shown, by doing interviews with stakeholders. We selected, for this case, 18 stakeholders. Uh, we conducted almost double that for interviews, but we were not successful at all times. That is why there's such a low representation of national government. We only managed to, to, to carry out one interview. We were a little uh, luckier with the regional government, although we don't have formal regions like in Spain or, or even in France, we do have some level of um, regional uh, authorities and we managed to do four interviews. We interviewed six uh, business companies or business associations some of a national level, others at the regional level, and also three civil society organizations and four representatives from the local government. The interviews provided a, a, a wealth of information about uh, stakeholders' perceptions about CCS, and the most important was that almost none of the people we talked to had any idea what CCS was. That's why we felt the need of sending beforehand some information about the project, but also about CCS, and also why we always had the technical partner present in these interviews to explain technical details, because there's a lot of, um, there's a lack, an extreme lack of knowledge about the technology. Most people have never even heard about it before we contacted them. And so these interviews were not so much an opportunity to collect information from them, but rather to make them aware of the project and of the technology. Overall, we can say that we found very different positions towards CCS in these interviews. And we cannot even say that some are more typical of local governments and some are more typical of civil society organizations. There was a, always a mix of uh, attitudes towards CCS. Some interviews are clearly in favor of CCS because they value their, its environmental benefits and its role in fighting climate change, and even its potential economic benefits for the region. We also found some people were in favor of CCS, but with reservations. They show support for the technology, but only provided some specific conditions are met, such as the existence of guarantees that the technology has no significant risks or impact on the environment. We also found some of our interviews were not entirely against CCS, but only allowed it in, under specific conditions. They were reticent about the role of this technology in carbon transition and the benefits of its implementation in Portugal. They support the technology, but only as a last option in the absence of other alternatives to fight climate change. We also found some interviews that were unable to take any position because they felt they did not have enough information to be able to stay in the position. But we also found some informants who were very distrustful of both the risks and the public reaction to technology. And this is something we found in almost all interviews that we carried out, is that stakeholders were particularly concerned uh, over what we would explain to the public about CCS, and they warned us repeatedly that we would have to be very careful with citizen engagement, because it's, this is a very complex topic. Injection of the technology. Next slide, please.
Richard, ah, thank you. Uh, I won't go in depth into the results of our public opinion survey, but they were, I wouldn't say surprising, uh, but we were expecting perhaps a little more rejection of CCS than we found in the survey. However, we must be clear that 90% or close to 90% of the people were interviewed for the survey did not know what CCS is. Some had heard of it, but they had no idea what it was specifically. That is why the survey contained a brief explanation of what CCS is. And then we had results such as that more than half agree that it could be a good solution to climate change. The acceptance of CCS uh, uh, in the region is over half of the interviewees, even though it must be said that a lot there's almost a balance between those who consider it unacceptable or neutral or are neutral about it or they don't know it. So we cannot say that there is a strong acceptance of the technology because in fact most of the people who do not know and who are neutral if they had more information they might be they might state a different position. Uh, as Elizabeth said, there was a slight difference in terms of onshore and offshore, and surprisingly, offshore was considered a little less acceptable than onshore. But that is something that we sh really should have bear in mind, is that the sea has a really um, importance in this region, and so it's almost natural that people want to conserve it. We also found that a little over half believed that CCS could have a positive impact on the region, but they were less convinced about positive environmental impacts. Almost all the people who were surveyed want to participate or believe that citizens should participate in the decision of having CCS or not, and 71% said that they would value having the, the municipality receiving some economic compensation for CCS. And we also found something that we find in all uh, surveys is that there are high levels of trust in scientists and NGOs, much more than in authorities and in companies. Um, we did all this work before the decision was made whether to pursue CC, the pilot CCS onshore or offshore. I cannot say that it was the results of social acceptability that uh, tipped the balance one way or the other. It was mostly a technical decision. Next slide, please. And so in October last year, 2022, our uh, friends from the University of Evora reached the conclusion that based on technical data, the best location for the pilot would be offshore on the coast of Figueira de Foz. Figueira de Foz is one of the eight municipalities we analyzed. Uh, it's on the northern tip of the region we considered. And it, has, uh, it is a fairly big city for Portuguese terms, which it has a port and it has uh, a lot of industrial activity, so this will not fall as a complete surprise or will not change entirely the, the, the character of the, the, the city, but it also relies strongly on tourism. It has long white beaches that are very popular in summer. It also has some surf spots, and so we believe that um, we will find some resistance from that point of view. We decided that before doing the regional stakeholder committee meeting that Sabine is going to talk about just after my presentation, we decided that we needed more information and we needed to get in contact with stakeholders. So we did a second round of interviews between November and February this year with local stakeholders cited precisely at Figueira de Foz the local authority, the port authority, the, man, the company that manages the port, one local business associations, two fishing associations, and one research center. And the results are not particularly different, but we became aware of some constraints that 
uh, need to take, be taken into consideration when moving forward with the CCS pilot, namely that the depth of the port um, is not very uh, big, so uh, the idea of sending uh, uh, carbon through uh, boats may not be feasible from this port, and also the impact on fishing that fishermen are concerned with. And that is something that is really going to concern us in the next stages, particularly of citizen engagement. We feel that we have to have some dedicated work with the fishermen in order to contemplate uh, their interests also in the decisions that are going to be made regarding CCS. Next slide, please. Thank you for listening and I'm more than, I welcome your uh, questions eagerly. Thank you. Thank you, Anna, for this deep dive into the Portuguese case. And now it's me um, taking over to give a few insights on what's currently happening um, regarding the stakeholder engagement and specifically on the regional stakeholder committees, uh, which you have heard about already uh, several times during this uh, webinar. Um, and now it's finally, uh, you will uh, know uh, what's going to happen there. So first of all, what is a regional stakeholder committee? Um, so we have those meetings or workshops um, with yeah, regional stakeholders. Um, and the plan is to have multi multiple uh, meetings with them um, in order to make sure um, that there is a continuous um, um, guidance of the stakeholders, um, but also vice versa. Um, so the idea is really to have the same group of people of about 15 people um, that more or less um, continue during the uh, project. So what is the goal of the project, uh, of the workshops of the regional stakeholder committees? It's really that we hear the stakeholders, that they can communicate their views, but also what they need regarding policy implementation, but also to hear their concerns and to see the diversity of different views. Of course, it's also the plan to uh, work together on whether it's feasible to implement CC, uh, CCS pilot and under which condition this is feasible, specifically in this region. And of course, um, those stakeholders, those regional stakeholders are not only um, persons that we get information from, but of course, they also act as informants for the region and for further citizens or other stakeholders um, within the region and regarding the CCS plans in the region. So we had those regional stakeholder committee workshops already in strategy CCUS. However, here we focus more on really the local stakeholders because um, the community is, is smaller and it's really um, more precise which stakeholders should be involved here. Next slide, please. So what has, currently, what has happened so far? What is going to happen? As you can see, we ha will have three face-to-face -face regional stakeholder committees as well as five virtual regional stakeholder committees. And those virtual regional stakeholder committees are going to take place in Spain Portugal and France, and the three face-to-face -face regional stakeholder committees are going to happen in all five regions that are part of pilot strategy. And um, all those are planned during the course of the five-year project lifetime. Um, the first face-to-face -face regional stakeholder committee was more or less the transition from strategy to pilot and has already taken place uh, last year. And the first virtual regional stakeholder committee um, took place uh, just this year, the a month ago, and we are currently planning the next face-to-face -face one for uh, fall this year. Next slide, please. Here you see the main objectives. So as I just said, um, the first face-to-face -face regional stakeholder committee workshop was really focusing on introducing policy and creating the smooth project transition from um, strategy to pilot, so it was more the focus on results from strategy and what it means for a pilot strategy, while the regional stakeholder committee workshop this year, uh, which took place in a digital manner, 
was really about showing the diversity of views and of course there were new and um, further stakeholders involved here as I mentioned um, and the it, it was partly about the results of the decision that uh, Anna has described for instance in, in Portugal. Next slide please. So this first virtual regional stakeholder committee um, has been taking place, as I said, in Spain, Portugal and France. And here you see it was more or less once every month. Um, so the first one in January, then in February and then in March. And you can see here the participants of the or the different stakeholders that participated in the workshops. Uh, and you see that this differs a little bit between the regions because there are different authorities that are or stakeholders that are more or less um, relevant for the different regions. But you see that in total it's between 14 and 19 stakeholders that participated. And you see that they, there are also similarities. For instance, there are um, industry or companies that participated um, or there are local authority, public administration, also national governmental agencies when they were relevant, support organizations such, such as environmental NGOs, but also very specific farmers or landowners that are really part of the region um, that we are looking at and that we are examining. On the next slide, you see what has happened there. So all of them more or less took about two hours, um, which was a good timing, but still um, there could have been more time for discussions. So the stakeholders were really engaged. Of course, at the beginning, it was an introduction of the project again, and also of the uh, technology. As Anna has said, um, it was very, it's very important to inform also to create more knowledge. Um, although most of the stakeholders are familiar with CCS, there are also a few that are not. Um, so this was very um, the, the very first part and then it was really a discussion about collecting questions um, and whether there are additional stakeholders that should be involved um, or specific benefits and risks of CCS within the region and also partly the presentation of the results that we have uh, conducted so far and that ha Anna has presented just a few minutes ago. So this was more or less the stable uh, process of the first regional stakeholder committee uh, across the three regions um, and there were leaflets sent before um, or it was uh, Mentimeter and subgroups, breakout groups were used um, to make it a little bit more interactive for the um, stakeholders and all of them were very interested and uh, it was a very lively discussion and most of them asked for further participation or further time for discussion. So this is a good uh, start for what's going to happen next. And if you're interested in more details how those virtual stakeholder committees um, worked, um, they are available on the project websites. There are short reports for each region. But on the next slide, you will see again what's going to happen next. Exactly. Um, so the, the plan for the face-to-face uh, -face regional stakeholder committee in fall is really to establish the stakeholder network and to discuss what requirements are um, or what conditions are necessary for CCS implementation within the region. Um, this is just planned for this year and as you can see more of them are going to uh, come to really discuss also the results that we get from the other work packages um, and to have this constant ex exchange um, and the constant uh, engagement of stakeholders. There are further um, engagement activities. Um, for instance, in France, there has happened an aperitif um, to really discuss the question and answer the questions that were uh, stated within the first virtual regional stakeholder committee. There are also talks with authorities um, that are currently in progress or planned. Um, those are part of the trans and interdisciplinary dialogue that Elisabeth has mentioned in her presentation. And uh, the citizen engagement strategy has been developed and is currently also available um, on the website uh, as uh, deliverable of par as part of our work package. So there is more to come and uh, we are not only looking forward uh, to what's going to happen next in the pilot strategy project, but also to your questions and to hear uh, what you think about and what your thoughts are. So I think on the next slide, it only says thank you. Yes, thank you.
Okay, thank you, Sabine. And uh, now it's uh, time to move into the Q&A session. And so we'll uh, have, so you will have opportunity now to ask questions to the presenters. Uh, we will be joined by six panelists who also contributed to the work that was presented today. Um, so these are uh, Lia Gongalves from CIEMAT, uh, Sergi Lopez also from CIEMAT, uh, Christian Oltra, also the same organization CIEMAT. Uh, we have uh, Mark Mader from Simlog, uh, Lena Kapler from Hanover, and uh, Jussara Roland also joining uh, the panel. Um, so we are um, going to start answering the questions submitted during today's presentation. And so as a reminder, you can still submit your questions through uh, the question pane uh, in your attendee control panel. Uh, so please do so. And um, we will start uh, with the first question uh, to um, uh, so the first question will be directed at the panel. Okay, so I, I welcome uh, you to jump in, and if we have a first reply from someone, someone else can add uh, something to it. Okay, so first question is uh, is about societal societal acceptance and uh, the existence or not of a regulatory framework in a region. So do you see a connection or a link between uh, the societal acceptance and uh, the existence of a regulatory framework? Uh, so is there a direct link uh, or, or does it mean if there is a lack of regulatory framework, does it mean there is also a lack of acceptance? Okay. Yeah, uh, I, I think the link is not necessarily um, in terms of um, acceptance, but it, there is a link um, in terms of awareness and knowledge or direct link. What we found is that usually a lack of regulation or legislation is also related to lower levels of, of course, activities and then also to lower levels of awareness. And I think um, Anna has pointed that out that this is then yeah completely that's a different start point for for a discussion when you when people are very unfamiliar with the technology. Um, I mean the at the end uh, whether there's opposition support neutrality I think that is even more open in in terms of um, if if the, the awareness is low. Um, and what we see in, in other projects and studies is then, like in that in countries of Norway, then it further goes hand in hand. And while the country pro is yeah, we're pushing forward on on the technology, then usually then the acceptance tends to be higher. But maybe it could can also be the other way around that if governments know that um, support is low in society, then they don't push forward. Okay. Please feel free to add from, from the others or from perspective of the countries. Yeah. Is there input from anybody else from the panel? Okay. Uh, so a, a question directed to, uh, I think it's to Anna. Uh, so in fact, two questions. Uh, first one, did you communicate the source of the potential CO2 that will be stored in a region? And uh, was this a topic of concern, where the CO2 will come from? That's the first question. And then the second one is, to what extent did the site selection process include some of the local context aspect you mentioned uh, at the beginning and, uh, and to what effect it was? Uh... Regarding the source of CCS, it was explained that one of the reasons why this region was chosen was the, because there was several sources of CCS, cement factories, porcelain factories, uh, and other industrial activities, glass factories that uh, are not able to, to, to reduce their uh, CO2 emissions otherwise. And so, that I think was a motivating factor for some people to accept from so, so stakeholders to accept CCS because they see it as a, a way of maintaining these industries in the region. 
others were quite concerned whether we would not be importing CC, uh, carbon from other countries. They were very keen to stress that they would not agree to become the trash can of Europe for uh, carbon. And so the, where the CO2 comes from is important to, to, to generate or to support the acceptance of CCS. The second issue had to do why social aspects were not considered. I don't think we were not able to give a straightforward answer to our colleagues from Evora because acceptance is nuanced. We were able to identify the drivers and barriers for acceptance fairly well, but we could not give them a, a, a definite answer whether onshore or offshore would be better in terms of social acceptance. It depends. Social life is complex and so we don't, we are not able to give us straightforward answers as we, as sometimes people would like. But I have to say that my colleagues from Everon was very in peace with that. And also they had very strong technical reasons to opt for offshore storage. And so social acceptance would play a very minor role when we have to take into consideration issues like safety, uh, lowering the risk of uh, having any sort of leaks, having a solid uh, uh, good, good deposits, but also non, uh, non other technical conditions that uh, provide reassurance in terms of the safety of this technology. And so in this case, social acceptance is complex and it's flexible because as new information arrives, people also change their minds. And so it's, it would never have an impact of uh, selecting one option over the other. Okay, thank you. Um, so it's a question about probably the methodology here is that when, the, uh, when you were preparing the introduction to CCS, obviously that was done by different groups uh, through different regions. Um, where the uh, the presentation was it coordinated and the question as is was the message and explanation and explanation of benefit were they similarly presented across the region or or not or were they more specific to the region itself um, and so that that <laughs> for all of you in fact <laughs> Uh, this question. So, so did you, when you realized that you had to present what CCS was, uh, did you coordinate that uh, ex explanation? Maybe I, 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 I start with a clear yes and no. So, um, so we, we partly, um, we are in a close exchange, so we partly um, use the same explanations and for example in the survey it was identical. Um, but then there are the regional elements and the regional context and we are not adapting what CCS is, but we are of course adapting on yeah, like the, the option where, where where is it taking place, what does it mean, like, like in terms of um, yeah, in, from geographic, regional issues, etc. And, and there were are differences in the audience, like these different levels of knowledge. So there's also an adaptation there in, yeah, in in terms of explanations given. But yeah, please from the regions, Anna. Well, uh, when we started asking people for giving us interviews, we first sent out a, a very short of the project with just some details about the region that was being considered and when we realized that a lot of people struggled with uh, knowing what CCS was we produced a, a bigger version of the leaflet with some frequently asked questions and in that case we went into more detail about the regional aspects and this was done in collaboration of course with the University of Evra and with other partners and, but what we realized over the course of the interviews was even though we sent the information beforehand, nobody read it. They browsed it, they looked across it, 
but no one read in any detail the information we sent. So I don't think that, I think it was important for us to send them, but I cannot say that it was very effective. Maybe a short addition for the um, for the regional stakeholder committee workshops. It was more or less similar how to approach the stakeholders, and here it, there were different methodologies used as well. Um, sometimes additional interviews, as Anna has uh, mentioned, in France. I think you even did uh, prior calls, so personal calls, to make sure that everyone is on the same page and. Um, what their knowledge of CCS is, for instance. So I think there have to be some adjustments, but the overall understanding within the project is, of course, uh, constant and simultaneous. Okay. Anybody else wants to share something here? No. Um, so other question. Uh, this is focusing on uh, Spain. Okay. Uh, it's a question about the legislation in Spain at the moment. It looks like there is quite uh, some gap uh, to make progress on CCS. Uh, the question is whether uh, you have engaged with national authority about this uh, gap on legislation in Spain. Yes, uh, well, thank you. Mm. Well, as re regarding the legislation, I think if I'm not wrong, the legislation for for storage is more or less established. Um, we we have contacted the national authorities and the regional authorities in the in the in the study area. Uh, what is not clear is the support of the, of the ministry for CCS and for future CCS storages. Uh, and this was part of the conversation. We have a, a, a small task in the project uh, called the Talk with Authorities, and this was part of this Talk with Authorities, uh, having this conversation with the Ministry about CCS in Spain. And well, it, the 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 regional the leader of the regional team, the technical regional team, is not here today, but uh, she was. Uh, happy to explain them the project and as far as I know they were interested in the in CCS, in pilot strategy and in the future of CCS in Spain but that's well then the official position of the ministry around CCS I think is in the, in the national reports and is still very wait and see I think I will say but uh, yeah I think that's it. Okay. Um, a question about the the key uh, the key issue uh, that came from your first interaction with stakeholders. Uh, so globally, what are the key issues? Are they about storage? Are they about the perceived impact? Uh, so could you give us a, a, an overview of what you found? So they see oh. around the, the yeah. um, yes. I think it, maybe that's a good idea to have a, a short answer from all of the regions because I think there were differences in that. So maybe Christian for Spain you could yeah. go to France. I think there are there are, there are many commonalities around the regions and then some specific questions. Uh, of course we always have these concerns by the stakeholders around the uh, the benefits of the project, global but mainly local benefits in terms of job creation, investments, um, science and technology investment also, uh, employment, socio socioeconomic development, and then the global benefits. But as I say, one key issue is always the local socioeconomic benefits. Then there's the, the risks the safety risks are usually critical for some stakeholders environmental risk meaning impacts on the local environment also landscape risks or impacts are concerns 
and then you have also discussions about the conditions for acceptance, uh, how the, the projects will be designed, which I think is more specific of the of the local context. Uh, I think that's the, this is this was the main uh, topics of the debates in Spain. So I'm um, uh, so thank you, Christian. I'm aware that we are uh, running into uh, the end of the, of the webinar already. We have more questions and we have time to answer them. So uh, I think the plan here is to send some uh, the answer by email when we have because we have your your detail. Uh, if you have more questions, you are welcome to send to contact the project through the website uh, pilotstrategy.eu. There is a contact page on the on the website, so please use the contact page to uh, interact with us. Um, I would like to thank you um, for. I would like to thank the presenter of the webinar today and the panelists. It was a short discussion, but uh, we need to we need to allocate perhaps more time in at the next uh, next webinar for more discussion. It was very interesting and thank you everyone for attending the uh, webinar today for Pilot Strategy. Um, so just for the audience, once you leave today's webinar, you will receive a survey on the presentation and we will appreciate it if you could complete uh, that survey and provide your feedback. You will also receive a follow-up email with a link to view and uh, the recording of today's webinar. And obviously the webinar recording will be available on our website on pilotstrategy.eu. Okay, so on behalf of uh, the project Pilot Strategy and uh, our presenter and panelist, thank you uh, for joining us today and have a great rest of your day. <laughs>